Retro Gamers and Tarper here from RetroGamesCollector.com and back with another Pickles video. Um, this one, another one for the month of May. Um, and I've been back to a car boot. I reneged on my last video where I said I wouldn't go to any car boots at all ever again. Um, uh, I was throwing my toys out of the pram and I basically tried again last week um, and came up trumps. Um, now the reason I stopped going to the car boots was because there was absolutely nothing left after the, the traders had basically raked every stall on there um, in the first few minutes of people turning up. Um, now I was thinking it was happening everywhere. The one I went to last week was a car boot that it's one of my favourite car boots of all time. I've been going to it for years um, and to be honest I've never had that much of a problem there. And um, and lo and behold, the, the, they basically the traders hadn't been round and taken everything. There was a ton of stuff still there. This was hours into the car boot. I didn't go early. Um, I went two or three hours after it opened, and the stuff was still there. So um, I was quite pleased. I've got a great big monster box full of. Um, I mean, it was a big box full of um, ZX Spectrum games. I got 117 games altogether, which. Um, I was quite chuffed with some really good titles in amongst them. I'm not going to bore you with showing you all the titles. Um, just take it from me. It was a massive box with 117 games in. Um, I haven't sorted them through yet. Um, there's quite a few good games in there. So I'm, I'm really pleased with that one. Um, amongst the games was this gem. This is a ZX Spectrum 1 to 8. Um, this was the last ZX Spectrum produced. Um, by Sinclair before they were taken over by Amstrad. Uh, so this hasn't got any of uh, Alan Sugar's mm, poor prints on. Got no dirty, great cassette player. It hasn't been Amstradized at all. It's a uh, pure Sinclair. Um, you can probably tell that by the dirty great heat sink up the side that it needs just for it to be able to run <laughs> um, and not overeat and melt the plastic case. Um, so there you go. Um, Spectrum 1 to 8. I have tested it. Um, it's got a few display problems, but there's nothing I can probably I can't fix with uh, with um, <coughs> stripping a few bits off some old spectrums I've got and uh, replacing the parts. Um, the main things that go wrong in these are the keyboard membranes, the ULAs, and the uh, the the AV out, the the display, the RF out actually. Um, the RF out can easily be converted to composite out. Um, it's basically composite out anyway on these things you just fiddle a few move a few wires around and, and basically uh, it's composite out um, so I should probably be doing that with it and it might fix the job might fix it so um, yeah got that I'm pleased with that uh, also got this battered old uh, plus um, which again works um, keyboard membrane seems to have gone in it the uh, partially gone in it I can I can get some keys to work and some not obviously it's got a key missing um, but I've got plenty of old ones lying around that I can uh, take a, a key off and go a new membrane for it and uh, Bob's your uncle and pièce de résistance now excuse my French not brilliant um, box Sinclair 48k rubber key to add to my collection I've already got about seven of these. Um, another one. Who cares? I like them. Um, I'll build a wall out of them if I want. Um, yeah, all all complete. Working. Um, I say working. Keyboard membrane's gone again. Some keys work, some keys don't. But at least it's got a nice sharp display. Um, and all the gubbins are in there, including the uh, Horizons cassette. Um, it's got everything. So. And that only cost me uh, 12 quid, so yay! Right, I've been shopping online as well. Um, I've been on Atari Age, one of my favourite websites. Um, they take forever to ship the stuff over to you, but um, when it comes, it's worth it. This is Oystrad, um, it's an homebrew title. Um, homebrew probably doesn't do it justice. Um, homebrew is a term we all use for. Um, titles that aren't officially released by uh, by the actual manufacturer itself, but um, 
it does it's not in any way cheap or shoddy it's a, a brilliant game um, basically squeezing every ounce of power out of a, a really old machine um, very cleverly programmed um, with a really professional booklet and uh, a lovely cart um, all printed up um, and ready to go um, I highly recommend uh, this uh, it's a brilliant game um, and uh, many other homebrew titles over at um, Atari Age um, because uh, there's some great stuff over there go and take a look atariage.com um, in their store um, under the homebrew 2600 um, tab um, some great stuff over there well worth buying can't recommend it highly enough um, I've also been shopping on eBay uh, again and um, this time I bought a, an old bunch of um, BBC Micro stuff. Um, now, for those who aren't in the UK, you might not know what a BBC Micro is. It was basically a, a machine that was developed for the education of uh, young Britons. Um, I used them in school um, in the early 80s. Well, throughout the 80s, actually. Um, and... Uh, uh, they're basically the equivalent of the Apple, what the Apple II was in um, in the United States. Um, every school had them, basically had whole suites of them. Um, and uh, I've bought a couple of those, a couple of Model Bs. I find it. Bear with me. Always pays to prepare for these videos beforehand. Ha. Um, yeah, um, the Model B. Is it? It's, a, it's not a dissimilar form factor to a, an Apple II. Um, beige, yeah. Um, and a 32K machine. Um, now, well, there was two of those in this bundle that I bought. And uh, a BBC Master. That's, this is the one I'm really chuffed with by. It's in brilliant condition. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Um, it's got no school marks on it because often you'll find postcodes burnt into these um, because they were the target of a lot of thefts in the 80s. Um, and uh, this one's completely clean, got no marks on it whatsoever. Um, this would be what the teacher used basically um, to network all the BBC Bs around the room. And this would be the controlling um, computer. This is a 128K um, machine uh, with ROM ports. I mean, I, I don't know whether you can make these out, but I mean, it had every IO port um, known to man on it basically. And if that wasn't enough, they couldn't actually fit them all on the back. They bummed the load there as well. Can you see the, can you see the uh, ribbon connectors there? So you can drive all sorts of um, equipment from them. Not only disk drives, but a ton of other uh, auxiliary equipment. Um, which made them good educational tools. Um, I remember having um, one of the one of the BBC Bs rigged up to uh, a robot arm at school that you could um, that you could program to pick things up, put things down, and and do things, turn things around, and yeah, um, and it was all good fun. Um, the brilliant programming tools. Some of the games you can get for these are quite close to arcade classics. Um, you can get a really really good version of uh, Defender and uh, Arcadians and. Um, you know some really really good uh, good games for them um, not to mention Elite which uh, one of the best versions around is for the BBC um, and there is an enhanced version of Elite for the Master 128 which I'm looking for but can't find a cheap copy of anywhere I think the cheapest one I found is uh, courtesy of a friend of mine who found one on eBay for 50 odd quid which I'm just not going to pay 50 odd quid for uh, 
a version of Elite. Um, so I'll wait till um, the announced version. This is bloody heavy. I'm putting it down. Um, wait for the announced version <coughs> to come up cheaper. Um, along with the B two BBCBs and the Master came uh, a couple of disc drives. Uh, one of them was box. I'll show you that in a second. This one's a, a forty eighty track um, actor um, drive. It'll work. I mean, this is the amazing thing about these. They're 30 odd years old. They probably haven't been used for decades. And uh, it's all still in perfect working condition. All three of the Beebs work, which I was surprised by. Um, yeah, I bought um, this as well with it. That's just a, f uh, a 40 track drive. Um, these take 5.25 inch floppy di discs, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and that's as good as new that one that's obviously not been used so they probably wanted uh, or probably needed an 80 track drive and uh, they bought this 40 track drive and probably it only got minimal use before the 80 track drive took over um, yeah boxes of uh, discs as well which I always love because I love I love looking through these um, now these discs you wouldn't think any of these would survive um, 30 odd years of storage but I haven't found one of them that hasn't actually loaded something up yet. Some of them have got a bit of corruption on them, um, but most of them are fine. And this one's just full of games. It's got games on both sides. I need to track this. Um, yeah. Um, brilliant. Um, 5.25 floppies. You can't get any more retro than that, can you? Um, so we get another box of another box of floppies and uh, an unopened box of floppies. Now, hopefully, these haven't been stored on somebody's speaker or something and, and been ruined. But uh, you know, if they have been stored correctly, there's no reason why these won't work. And that is about it. Um, so I'll see you again next month with uh, another pickups video, hopefully. Um, and until then, um, keep it retro, guys.